You sound so excited, Charlie. So, um, hello everyone, and welcome back. We were just talking about hair colors, and then I thought of something because I accidentally bumped my <coughs> finger. Uh, so earlier today, I cut my finger on a really sharp knife, and then, later on, I had to do stuff with apple cider vinegar, and that just felt amazing. Um, anyway, welcome back to another episode of our Glacier Ridge campaign. Um... This is a Monster of the Week campaign. Um, Monster of the Week is a game created by Michael Sands um, based on your favorite Monster of the Week television series, which by this point, if you don't know what a Monster of the Week television series is, then you haven't been listening, but I'll catch you up real quick. Um, pretty much any series that fights a monster every single week, a different monster, that's a Monster of the Week series. Um... On top of that, this is our Glacier Ridge one, so we uh, have a custom campaign, as usual. Um, this campaign is based in the Northwest Territories in Canada, in a fake or made-up town called Glacier Ridge. Um, Glacier Ridge is uh, near Nahani Valley National Park, which... Sorry, I just... Uh, I think... I think uh, Frankie and I are laughing at the same thing. Um, I'm trying not to, okay? Anyway, so... Uh, well, I can't help it. Not... Just mm. turn off your phone. He won't see it anymore. <laughs> I was waiting for the response. Um, you send it to the Discord. Yeah, send it to the Discord. See what the You're reaction is. If you don't, I'm going to. Um, anyway, so, so, uh, yeah, it's a made-up town near Nahani Valley National Park, which is in the Northwest Territories. Reason being is most of the activity that is going to be happening in this game is going to be in Nahani Valley National Park, which makes it easy for the players to get there by having a town right nearby. So, um, <laughs> what? Oh, I see. Oh, both of you sent it. to the stream. <laughs> I, I think we'll. I think we're okay. We don't need it on stream. Uh, yes. He he still has a job in the real world that doesn't need to be released into into the ether. Um. Okay, um, so, recap. What what did we do last week? Um, let me just go over this real quick with you guys. So. Um, so, at the start of the game, we basically picked up where we left off, which was the five black vans driving past the lodge. Um, two of them drove... Uh, west and three of them drove north uh then maxine confronted charlie about the black vans um wanting to know what the what was going on um who they were blah 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 blah, blah. charlie told him that they're likely his people uh and then maxine asked well wait a second uh two of them went west and three of them went north and charlie um, told her, oh, then two of them must not be my people then. Just all happened to roll into town at the same time, but yeah, two of them aren't your people. Um, so, uh, Maxine left it at that, and then her and Victor tried to sneak out of the lodge, um, but they almost got caught by Dr. Helena, Helena Sinclair, um, where they uh, hid until doctor the doctor went away. Uh, once they got out of the lodge, um, they started driving Victor's van towards the abandoned mill, which is to the west of town, um, where they saw two black vans driving back towards town. 
Um, immediately, they decided to slam on the brakes and head back to town, and Victor and Maxine went and knocked on Charlie's door, uh, where Charlie was going to try to pretend he was sleeping, but he did not. Kind of talked to them for a little bit about what happened, um, and he swears up and down that they had nothing to do with him. Uh, afterwards, they went uh, to bed and went downstairs after waking up for breakfast. Um, during the breakfast, they talked about more about what happened, um, and then uh, Victor and Maxine went to the abandoned mill where they found out that uh, Jason and Rachel are no longer there. Um, after that, Wyatt ended up going to try to find Finn um, to let him know that he's safe now, uh, there's no more monster, all good. Um, then Wyatt decided to talk to him about Bigfoot more and more, because that's what Finn was doing, was leaving out snacks for Bigfoot. And then they went to the library and watched Bigfoot videos. <laughs> uh, then Maxine and Victor uh, went and met with Frankie at the lodge. Started talking about different things that happened. Uh, Frankie brought up the book that they found in the... Uh, in the ruins and uh, just at that time uh, a voice was heard behind them and said oh hi I'm Dr. Helena Sinclair did you find something old let me see um, and Frankie disguised themselves or not disguised but like pretended to be um, Maxine for this encounter um, basically Dr. Helena Sinclair let them know that uh, ten of her associates are going to be joining her in Glacier Ridge to do some investigation. Um, she was thanking Frankie, who was pretending to be Maxine, uh, for sending the, uh, an email. And she uh, basically started doing her own research on the area and decided it was interesting enough to come and check it out. So yes, in the near future, eleven of her companions or 11 people are going to be investigating the area around town. Um, so that is something fun for you guys. Um, and then Frankie gave misinformation, but kind of not misinformation, about a uh, waterfall that they could go investigate. Um, the doctor took the information and left. Uh, and then Wyatt and Finn finally leave the library and go their separate ways. Victor and Maxine go to the police station to talk with um, Sheriff Bennett about uh, whether the vans were his or not. Um, they tried talking in the open air and immediately got shut down by the sheriff saying, no, we don't talk like that here, blah, 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 tip them to their office. Um... Then, uh, Wyatt and Frankie headed to the pub. Um, Wyatt went and talked to Ezekiel, talking to him about uh, different inventions and talking about Bigfoot for a bit as well. Uh, then Frankie spoke with Sophia, trying to get uh, Sophia to... What were you actually trying to do with her? Like, what, what was your Honestly, end goal there? There wasn't one. Okay. Um... I thought because she was interested in being a reporter and stuff, this would have piqued her interest enough to, I don't know, maybe be, like, an in for leads or something. And then I was also like, she's not gonna respond. She's not gonna show up. And she should. Yes. And then... And the as, she, as she left, she did offer Frankie a makeover because green hair is so out now. Um, um, and Frankie left, was left shouting, I like trees into the open air. Um, well, I tried to argue that green is a good color. Yes, and she said it was a good color for trees, and you said, I like trees. Yeah, but she was gone by then, but I still yelled it out anyway. Yes. Uh, and then Wyatt spoke to Silas, um, started to get, try and get a little bit of information there. And Silas was like, there's a reason I work with dead people. I don't really like talking. 
um, and then Wyatt started bringing up about weird happenings and he was like nope we don't talk about that out here um, and then that was pretty much it that was the end of the game Did I miss anything? Anybody remember anything that I missed? No. Uh, yeah, uh, Frankie making a total ass of themselves. When? Just the entire time they were talking to oh, Sophia. Okay, just want to make sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, Frankie was trying to convince Sophia um, to chase uh, her dreams. Um, when Sophia has an offer from her father on the table for a hundred million dollars if she takes over the company. So, yeah. Yeah, not a great argument on my end, okay? There's a lot of loud trucks in town. Anywho, uh, so, what are you guys doing today? the next day I think so. is it the next day yeah. uh yeah we, you... up, we left off no uh it would be the next day because yeah it was it was nighttime okay so i guess go down for breakfast I'll eventually build up the ability to go downstairs for breakfast. So, oh, is there anybody else down there? Uh, what time are you going down, I guess, is the better question. I was sleeping a little bit. I was out like... So then, yeah. Victor would be down there already. Victor and Charlie. Yep. Well, Charlie never sleeps, so. <laughs> Charlie's on a... Lizard people don't need to sleep. Yeah, they just uh, <laughs> get their energy from the sun. Uh, okay, so. Um, you go down, and Tom is sitting at the head of the table with a laptop. Um... All right, guys. Good work. Uh, things are finally calming down in that area. So, kudos all around. Give yourselves a nice pat on the back. Maybe a round of applause. Are you guys um, ready for another possible mission? Yeah, I've been uh, getting some intel on one. Oh? Yeah, it sounds like that... Uh... Bigfoot's asleep, but the Yeti's out, and he's been eating the food that uh, Finn's been leaving for Bigfoot. Oh. Um, well, if we can catch footage of Bigfoot, I mean, or, or Yeti, I guess. Man, that's that's been searched for forever, so that'd be pretty sweet. So, I will keep that in mind, but that's not quite what I'm looking for. Okay, so what are you looking for? So, um, I've been talking to people around town, kind of uh, getting some intel, a little bit of information. Um, have you guys heard any singing yet? Because I've been told that that's a possibility. I've heard about it. Not unless you count the terrible singing you can hear from Victor's room when the shower's going. That's no, hurtful. not quite that one. Oh, come on, Maxine. You've heard it. It's not pitch perfect. I thought it was a pipe. Some kind of moaning. We're out in the middle of nowhere, but I hope their pipes are better than that. <laughs> well. Has uh, anybody talked to anybody that has talked about the singing? Yeah. 
Nope. Who are you talking we to? Finn, we actually were going to go check it out one day, but uh, then I had a sneaking suspicion that something bad was going on. And I left. What is it with you, monsters, and Finn? Finn knows everything. Y'all haven't had if y'all not y'all haven't talked to Finn. Finn's got the inside scoop on everything around here. Yeah, I don't look, I appreciate you telling me that. I don't know how much tolerance I have to try and have that conversation with small children. Everything he told me about the beast with the red eyes was true. Well, he Who won't be this? up this early, will he? Who's this Finn? Uh, he's my friend. Are we talking like old friend, young friend? I mean, I haven't known him for very long. He's not that old. Are you asking you know, if he's a child? Yes. Yeah, he's a child. Sorry, what was that, Wyatt? He's a little bit younger than me. Ah, yeah. I'm not necessarily sure I would follow uh, all the leads from there, but you said he just heard the singing. He's a bat in the hundred so far. What time is it right now? Um, right now, you're probably looking at about 10 a.m. Well, he's probably up. Does he go to school? Oh, no. Is it winter break? I don't know what time of the year it is. Uh, it's January still. So probably not winter break. Uh... Well, actually, uh, it's kind of a question for you guys then. Do you want to have some downtime a little bit that in between that there is stuff that you might want to have done uh, before we move on to the next time and then we can kind of jump forward in time a little bit? Oh, uh, your drone was returned to you, by the way, Maxine. That's good. It's all fixed up now. Yeah. I mean, what do uh, we want to do? I personally don't have a whole lot of downtime stuff to do, but same. It's up to y'all. Yeah, there's not too much exciting things to do around here. What are you talking about? It's a, it's a hip happening party town. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Well, if that's the case, then um, let's talk. What do you guys know about sirens? And on the top of cop cars? No. Not the. I like where your head's at, but not quite right. Are you seriously suggesting that there's sirens this corner? I mean, frigid sirens, maybe, but why not? Doesn't seem possible. Okay. Then you tell me, Frankie, what do you think the singing is? Well, it could be really any kind of natural phenomenon that's been reported all over the world that there's like singing rocks and singing like rivers and stuff. It's how. All right. Well, together, so it could literally be anything. Okay. Don't like her attitude about the or their attitude about this. There. But, yeah, I got it. I got it. Don't like their attitude about this, but you know, everybody needs a skeptic. So, a couple things. I was watching a video on YouTube last night. Um, it's exploring the haunted forest of Nahani Valley, uh, and there were a couple of comments. 
Um, this one's from Haunted Hiker 92. Uh, OMG, I went hiking in Nahani Valley last month and I totally heard that weird melody everybody is talking about. It was so creepy. I had the strangest dreams that night too. Definitely not going back there alone. So, I mean, this has happened within the last little bit here. Uh, I Sorry, I should state, the video is from last month. Um, and then the post was, the comment was also from last month, so it happened. Yeah. And then there's another, another, another whoa. Ooh, another comment there. This is fascinating. The way you describe the melody gives me chills. Do you think it's really a siren, or could it be some kind of natural acoustic phenomenon? Was this you, Frankie? Either way, it's spooky as heck. Uh, what was the comment handle? Mystic Tales. Yeah, no, not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this one's from Night Owl 34. I grew up near Nahani Valley, and I've heard the stories my whole life. One night, my friends and I decided to investigate. We heard the melody and followed it, but everything, af everything after that, that is a blur. We woke up miles away from where we started with no memory of what happened. Scary stuff. Um, so, I mean, you never know. Uh, and then I was doing a little bit more research and I found this blog post from last year, uh, June 12th, 2024. Hello, dear readers. Have you ever been enchanted by a melody so hauntingly beautiful that it sends shivers down your spine? In the heart of Nahani Valley, such a melody has been heard by many and its origins remain a mystery. The locals whisper of a siren song, a tune that lures unsuspecting travelers into the forest where they become lost in a dreamlike trance. Some claim to have even seen ghostly apparitions or felt an overwhelming sense of dread when the melody fills the air. Others report waking up in strange places with no memory of how they got there. What is the true nature of this enigmatic siren? Is it a natural phenomenon or is there something more supernatural at work? I'd love to hear your theories and any personal encounters you may have had with the Siren of Nahani Valley. Until next time, stay safe and keep your wits about you. The Midnight Wanderer. Eh? Thoughts? You know what? I just remembered an episode of Scooby-Doo that I saw, and maybe there is like a cave with bottles in it. And the wind goes through and blows the bottles. I mean, I like it's an option, man. Look, like I said, literally anything is possible. I just... We can't always jump to it's the supernatural. It could be right. just somebody practicing their singing. Victor, is it you out there? Yeah, it's me singing. All right, mystery solved. Done. Done and done. Yeah, um, not me. And it's worth a checkout. Why not? I mean, we're here either way, right? Yeah, exactly. So, a couple things. Um, obviously, ask around town. I was in the restaurant the other day, and I actually heard somebody say uh, something about the eerie melody that they heard last night, and it was giving them the creeps. So, it's happening. You don't recall who it was that was talking, eh? Um, there was a couple of ladies talking to each other. That's the best I can do for you. I haven't really met a lot of people around town. Um, can I try and look into the identity of our mission logger? Uh, that's what you want to do, then sure. Uh, 
roll and investigate a mystery, I guess. Okay. Uh, where'd my dice go? I don't know. You have about 3,000 of them. I didn't just almost drop my dice. Yeah, but these ones have been... Cause... Okay, plus... Eight. Eight? So you get to pick one, I believe. Just pulling up now. Okay. Uh, would what is being concealed be like the closest to what I'm yeah. trying to find? Yeah, you're trying to find out who. Which which one are you wanting to find out? The blogger you said. Yeah. Or the comments. Um, more specifically, the blogger. Um, why is it not opening? Sorry, one sec. There we go. Uh, on a seven and nine, hold one. Yeah, so you get to pick one of those. One is being concealed here. That works. Um, okay, so you go down kind of a deep dive. Um, you click on his username. Uh, and <laughs> it links to a PayPal account. Um, and it's like donations welcomed um, and then that PayPal account has a link to an email and you Google that email and that email takes you to like a Facebook account and that with that Facebook account you find out um, that his name is Jake Fresh Jake Fresh rather to Joe Fresh <laughs> they don't get that. Oh yeah, I guess they don't have uh, that brand, eh? Nope. Siren blogger. Uh, okay. I will uh, point out. Um. He does not live here. Um. I guess. As you uh, kind of go through his blog a little bit, uh, you start to realize that he is just somebody who researches and posts on stuff about like cryptids and supernatural beings and things. That he's witnessed himself? No. No. So he's irrelevant. Fantastic. Um. Okay, I guess after I dug to a certain point and like figured that stuff out, I, I would kind of try and backtrack and see if I can figure out commenters, see if anyone's local. Um, so I would say your closest one would be. Oh. Um. Haunted Hiker 92. That's a YouTube comment. Okay. I guess that's the one we'll... I would probably spend time to dig into. Okay. So, I'm just gonna give so you... Is this... Go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. I'm just gonna Go give ahead. you something uh, real quick about the profile picture. Um, has a bunch of different symbols as the profile picture, and that's it. Oh. Like cryptology symbols? You don't know. It's just a bunch of symbols. So is this the start of the mystery? Yes. Oh, you're doing your thing? Mm -hmm. What is your thing again? Um, you get to roll at the beginning. I give you something. I roll plus weird. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not that it matters in this instance, but um, I believe that that is a uh, 13. This is premonitions. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> you can come back to it when it's more appropriate if you want to give it a little bit. Take it back. Uh, yeah, that might be uh, probably best. Okay, um, does I, I'm going to put this out here right now. Does anybody else have powers that needs doing right now at the start of the mystery? At the beginning? I don't think I do. I only have when I first see the creature. Frankie. The same as Anastasia is the same. Yeah. Frankie, anything? Um, no, I think when you're all at the group. Okay. No. Those are all like actions? Yeah, or when I do something. Okay. Alright, well that being the case. Um, you all see, um, Wyatt kind of start to, as he's, like, taking a bite of bacon, he kind of, like, stops in his tracks kind of thing and has, like, a weird look on his face. Um, Frankie, doing her normal thing. Or their normal thing, sorry. Uh, actually, one sec, sorry. Music. Can't have this playing during this. Um, uh, Frankie got separated from the team during your guys' investigation. Um, you guys were wandering through the forest, and they just wander off to the side. Um you hear the melody that's always kind of talked about you've never heard it yourself but it's something that seems to be drawing frankie away and it's getting louder and more intoxicating with every single step frankie's going off on their own uh it seems to have seeped into their mind at this point and they're they have a very glazed over look in their eye um, the fog in the forest you've never seen this part of the forest yet but it's uh, right by a lake right by some water um, and the fog begins to swirl around and you kind of see like ghostly shapes that dance just out of reach the song begins to kind of crescendo and Frankie's surroundings begin to shift and distort the trees stretch out taller the branches start twisting the ground beneath them softens and they start to shrink or sink into it um like quicksand similar yeah uh suddenly uh the fog parts uh and you see a small clearing that's like the moonlight is shining down on it and right in the center of this clearing is a pool of water that is just so perfectly still and completely dark that um, the light doesn't even penetrate it's like completely black um frankie begins to draw uh draw closer to the pool and you can see the reflection like shimmer across the surface um and as they look into the water you see Frankie's reflection and then it begins to change um, 
this isn't a insult to Frankie by any means, but instead of their own face, they see like a just incredibly beautiful uh, figure appear. Um. Oh, Frankie's one hundred percent average. It's okay. Okay, I just want—I just wasn't wanting insults. Uh, uh, when you see this, you haven't learned of this yet, but you recognize this somehow as the siren of Nahani Valley. Um, her eyes are dark and void. Her lips are parting just slightly enough to sing the melody that had lured Frankie to this place to begin with. And it grew louder and more insistent. Then the siren reached out of the water, fingers cold and dripping with water, and grasps onto Frankie's wrists. Frankie tries to pull away, but the siren pulls um, the world. Uh, yeah, pulls her into the water and them into the water. Sorry, uh, and begins to everything begins to go dark. Um, you can't see the trees, you can't see the moon, can't see the fog, nothing. Um, the only thing that remained was the siren and the song. Uh, the water, uh, Frankie's completely submerged in a pool of water, um, struggling to break free, free trying to fight, um, but nothing is working. Um, you see Frankie's face begin to get more and more scared. Uh, and, uh, you see, like, the panic on their face, and the siren's face changes. It was once this beautiful thing, and now it's just this disgusting, ghastly, mocking smile that's twisted across their face. Uh, and then just as Frankie could, couldn't bear it anymore, uh, she... Or they were laying on the ground completely soaked and shaking uh, but just laying on the ground in the forest as they look around uh, they can still hear the melody but it was that's it um, so Frankie got up regained the composure and started looking for the rest of the group and that's where it ends <laughs> I will come to humming a tune. Seems appropriate. <laughs> Frankie slaps. He slaps everybody across the face. No! No more singing! Well, Frankie okay. didn't have that vision. Wyatt did. But he's Thank come back you. humming. Huh? What? What's going? What? What? What's going on? You just like completely zoned out. Oh. You said something and then just kind of stopped mid sentence and then just sat there. You good? Did you not sleep? Holding a piece uh, of bacon. Maybe it's, maybe it's just really good bacon. It's really good bacon. I'm gonna go upstairs for a little while. I'll be back. Thank you. All right. Whatever. Grabs a handful of bacon and goes back upstairs. <laughs> hey, he's got to sell it somehow. Um, okay. That seems right, a little odd. Like, tastes the same as it always does. Maybe he hasn't tried it yet. This was the first time he actually tried it. I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with an excuse. That was really weird. So, you guys cool with this one? Might as well. Alright. Well, uh, let me know if you need anything. Go. Frank, you just turned back to your laptop. So, the only one he said was talking to... Oh, no. Where did he say those ladies were at? Restaurant. 
but no names, no description, just random ladies. No, I don't really talk to people that much. I have a lot of work to get done. I got to make sure. That do, you, do you have a de- do you have a do you have a description though, or anything to give us? Old, young. I wouldn't say super old. I'd say probably mid thirties. Um. Yeah, mid thirties. Uh, I think one had red hair, the other one had brown hair. It wasn't Evelyn. She's I actually know her. Okay. And when was this? Average height. When was this? Yeah. Um, I was there for lunch, so one ish. No, 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 no. Oh, it was two days ago. Okay, well, it's not that big. Maybe Evelyn would remember who he's talking about. Like I'm saying, there shouldn't have been that many people for lunch at one-ish. I mean, it is the only restaurant in town, but... Was it full? No. But well, that's what I'm saying. So, do we want to hunt uh, Evelyn down and see if she can remember? Might as well. Because just I can't remember. Does Finn's mom have reddish hair? Correct. Not reddish, red. Okay. There's an overwhelming number of redheads in town. Oh, that's hereditary. Hereditary? <laughs> and Ev- Evelyn has red hair too, doesn't she? Correct. Yeah. And so does her daughter. <laughs> and so does her sister. So does your mom. Incorrect. Who is that? Right there. I feel like this is Evelyn's daughter. Okay. Well, let's hop over to the restaurant then. It shouldn't be too busy. Oh, there's that strange guy with red hair at the bottom there. <laughs> So you're hopping over to the restaurant? Sure. Uh, Evelyn's kind of wandering around, uh, handing out coffees. I'll be right with you. What can I do for you guys? No problem. Um, we were just talking to Tom, and he was saying that he saw a couple, or he overheard a couple ladies talking the other day he didn't really give us a great description he just said that one was red headed and he thought the other one was a brown haired said in their 30s does that ring any bells we're just looking yeah. to talk to them a little bit I, th- I know I there's mean, lots of red headed and I, I think I know who you're talking about. I'm pretty sure it was Molly and Olivia I... Molly and Olivia oh Victor will be very excited. I mean, they meet for lunch occasionally, so it could be. And were they just in here the other day? Yeah, they come in like three or four times a week for lunch. Okay. Okay, well, we can drop by and... Uh, Molly will be here later. Um, She lives with me, so... Ah, okay. Molly is my sister. Yes. Just so you're Oh, right. she lives with you too? Yeah. She moved to town to help me with Emily after my husband died, so Oh. Well that was very supportive of her. That's nice. I mean oh. to be fair, Emily isn't that much of a handful, but it is nice of her, yes. No, she's a good kid. Although she has been getting a bit of an attitude after hanging out with your child. Well, he's, he's not 
I know he's not yours, our, yes. but just... He snuck out the other night, and I wasn't too pleased. No, I, I understand. I understand. But, yes. Wyatt, he, it's like, he's a... He's a He's a good kid. He's had a, a very rough life, so... But, uh, yeah. Well, we'll... We'll have a little chat with him because, yeah, that's not that's not good for you to be worried like that. So, so yeah. But thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for your time. And you said Molly will be back a little bit later. Uh, yeah, she. Um, although we don't have like a definite school, um, she does offer classes in the library. She was a teacher, so. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. All right, well, we'll probably see you later. Thanks for your help. You kind of stuck here, so. <laughs> True. 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 I'll let you get back to work. Not a problem. It's nice seeing you guys. Hey, who? Did somebody come with me? I mean, I just assume Victor's always with you. I don't know. Sure. Victor's just left the room for a second. 